Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so glad that you chose to listen to another episode of Single Saints Who Try. Today I have a quick thought for you guys, a quick metaphor that may just change your way of thinking. But before I share this with you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your support on this podcast. While I can't see who listens to it individually, I can see the numbers, and I'm just so grateful that we have such a solid little squad of listeners here, and I love seeing it continue to grow, but I just am so grateful for your guys' loyalty. And I would love for you guys to share this with other single friends, because I'm just so excited to see the word keep spreading. So thank you guys so much for everything. So back to our topic for today. I heard this comparison a long time ago. I don't even know who or where I heard it. But I want you to think about this. Are you a sustainable energy dater or are you an energy drink dater? I'll say that again. Are you a sustainable energy dater or are you an energy drink dater? Let me explain. Just like energy drinks, we crave that adrenaline high in life. But the healthier and more sustainable version is usually a little less exciting and more constant or consistent. I know this firsthand, quite literally, you guys. I have had an energy drink, an energy drink addiction for so long and only recently have been able to cut back on it a little bit. But it's really hard to have patience and make like the healthy choices that start paying off long term. You know, like taking vitamins. You take a vitamin, it's not going to do anything. But if you take a vitamin for a month, you'll probably see some benefits. But it's really hard because a lot of times you just want that quick fix, adrenaline rush, I need energy now, I got to get through this now. But it just ends in a crash and burn. And it's not what you need at long term and it doesn't solve your problem. So in terms of dating, are you looking for a quick fix to whatever problem you're having? Whether it be physical, emotional, tired of being alone, you need a date to the family Thanksgiving dinner, that's energy drink dating. When you're almost kind of like frantically going out with people to satisfy a specific need. Even if that need is just to say that you're trying in the dating world. You know, you want to be able to say, yeah, I'm dating, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying, but, but how are you trying? It actually makes a difference. So the problem with this is that when we are functioning in this state of mind, we might not be making choices that serve us long term, aka sustainably. Functioning without intentional dating habits can result in picking or even settling for people that, you know, aren't really for us just because they're available, they're around. So picking people that don't share our core values just because they're available or they might even bring some excitement into your life. Settling for someone that may not be right for you because you just need a solution to your loneliness or even compromising your own values and standards to meet your needs. These are all additional examples of energy drink dating. So this, of course, being compared to sustainable dating, which in turn has no rush. There's no rush to end your loneliness, no rush to force someone to be your soulmate, no rush to satisfy any type of need, physical, financial, emotional, social, etc. So sustainable dating looks like dating because you want to and you're trying to enjoy it. Not because you feel the social pressure to be saying that you're dating or not because you're trying to find a quick solution to a problem. It means you take time in picking the people that you spend your time with. Time in picking the people to the best of your abilities that align with what you need long term. Not just who is the most exciting in the moment. I love the stories that we hear from couples who tell us it's normal and healthy for us to take a while to form a romantic connection. Of course, there are exceptions to this, obviously. Is there anything more comforting than two best friends or even like, you know, family, close friends that slowly realize their life is better with each other in it? That's sustainable attraction. Not necessarily anything massively exciting like an energy drink, but it's a sustainable satisfaction that was created with purpose and intent. So hopefully you guys have got what I'm saying about energy drink dating. And I just want to be clear, there's nothing wrong with going on fun dates, but there's no long-term solution in momentary satisfactions. This brings me to my next topic of the day. I want to talk to you guys about reflecting on emotional versus physical loneliness. Yeah, that's pretty blunt, but both of these things are a real thing. 
and neither one of them is something to be ashamed of, but being mindful of which one is leading our decisions will help us to make decisions that serve us more in the long run. So for example, being physically lonely can obviously mean sexually, which is difficult for most singles living the gospel standards, but it can also be things like just wishing you had someone to run errands with, watch TV with, or even just, you know, like have with you at social events. There's nothing wrong with these things. It's just that they're really motivating to make quick decisions. And if you think about it, any person can fill these needs for us. But if we're patient enough to pick someone who also satisfies our emotional and intellectual needs, it produces a more sustainable solution. All of a sudden, instead of being stuck with some random person just because it's convenient, you might find yourself spending time or ending up with a person who aligns with your core values and fulfills more than just one kind of need in your life, you know, for the rest of your life even. Wouldn't that be better? Wouldn't it be better to watch TV with someone or hold hands with someone that you can't get enough of emotionally? That's the difference between letting your physical loneliness and your emotional loneliness drive your decisions. It's just such a good feeling, you know, when you hit it off with someone that's just so easy to talk to or gets your sense of humor or has common interests with you. Or maybe it's not even a word thing. Maybe you love their standards. Maybe you love how they treat your family or maybe they make you feel safe. But these are the people that we want to keep in our lives for as long as we can. But they're also not the type of people you're going to find that are available for a quick fix. Because how can you find someone that is emotionally satisfying that fast If you're just looking for a quick placeholder for granny's Thanksgiving dinner, you can't. Because the sustainable dating tactics are something that help you have patience and be okay being any type of lonely until the correct person comes along who will also date you in the correct way. We don't want to crash and burn like when your energy drink wears off. It helps in the moment and we might have a lot of fun, but tomorrow it's going to really suck (laughs) and you still have your loneliness problem tomorrow or the next day or the next month. And when that time comes, we'll really wish that we had put some solid and mindful work into our dating life so that it could have produced the sustainability we need in life. So I encourage us all to date sustainably. Best of luck and may the odds be in all of our favors, obviously, and I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of Single Saints Who Try. Follow us on social media or listen on any podcast platform. Comment on YouTube or DM us on Instagram for any single saint stories, insights, or questions. We'd love to hear more from you as a single saint who's trying. And don't forget to join us again next week for a new episode.